I'm no stranger to retellings of Arthurian legend. Many things that I enjoyed growing up in some way or another have taken their own spin on King Arthur and the Holy Grail, but I admittedly never engaged beyond that. I knew enough to be dangerous, the Once and Future King, Quest for the Holy Grail, Camelot, etc. So it was interesting picking up King Arthur Knight's Tale and learning more about Arthurian legend while simultaneously experiencing a new and interesting take. In King Arthur Knight's Tale, you play as Sir Mordred who, in this telling, waged a massive war against King Arthur, ending in a final battle where Mordred and Arthur struck each other down. In the wake of their deaths, a strange corruption took root in Avalon, resurrecting the dead and releasing a scourge upon the island that threatened to destroy and spread beyond the shores of the isle. The Lady of the Lake attempted to resurrect Arthur, but the curse infected and used Arthur's soul to take root in Avalon, twisting him into a seemingly undying monstrosity. In order to combat this curse, the Lady of the Lake resurrects Sir Mordred to finish what he started, sending him on a knightly quest to restore Camelot, construct a court of knights, and kill King Arthur once and for all to save Avalon. The gameplay of King Arthur Knight's Tale is a blending of turn-based tactical and character-focused RPGs, with elements of settlement upgrading. The core loop in the game is sending a party of four knights on missions that consist of isometric exploration and battling groups of enemies. In addition to the main narrative missions are side missions that typically offer chances at additional resources, high amounts of XP for your party, or recruiting new knights for your court at Camelot. You're able to freely explore the mission areas to search for chests or loot such as additional gold or runes that act as enhancements for your characters. There are also campfires where you're able to rest and heal your party. During exploration, you will also encounter groups of enemies in hand-placed locations and engage in grid-style turn-based battles. Battles take place on a typical square grid, and characters each have hit points, armor points, vitality, and action points, or AP. You're able to control each character in your party in any particular order, with only the number of action points a character has limiting your decisions. Hit points are a character's functional health, which can easily be healed and automatically regenerates after each mission. Armor points also regenerate after each mission and have an interesting function where each armor point a character possesses reduces the amount of incoming damage they receive by that amount. However, taking damage can result in losing armor points, meaning characters will slowly take more damage as they take more and more hits. Vitality acts as your true health value and is only reduced when a character has zero hit points. Taking vitality damage can result in injuries that will negatively affect your character's performance and having vitality fall to zero will result in permanent death for that character. Campfires around the mission area offer the option to replenish hit points or armor points, requiring the player to strategize around which is more important for the situation. As part of your nightly quest to defeat Arthur, you must also rebuild Camelot as a base of operations for your round table. Camelot has various facilities that can be rebuilt with gold and building materials earned from missions or events. Facilities include a merchant for purchasing supplies, a cathedral for mending character injuries, and each facility can be upgraded to unlock additional benefits. You're also able to assign titles around Camelot to your knights, which will increase their loyalty and performance in battle, and, depending on the character, unlock further additional benefits. Characters that build your roster can belong to one of six different classes, Defender, Champion, Marksman, Arcanist, Sage, and Vanguard. Each character has a unique identity thanks to traits that can have a positive or negative effect, and each class has a different playstyle and skill tree. Skill points can be earned when leveling up and can be spent on new active or passive skills. For example, champions are heavily clad powerhouses useful for tanking and dealing large amounts of damage, and Arcanists specialize in ranged attacks and hexes to debuff enemies. Each class also has specific rune slots that act as equipment and can provide additional benefits while improving their base stats. There are different types of runes that act as equipment for each class. For example, one-handed weapon runes are used by defenders and vanguards, while two-handed weapon runes are strictly for champions. While runes are effectively just equipment, I did think this was a smart way to have an equipment system without having to design multiple pieces of each gear type. There's also a loyalty value for each character and a morality system that is dictated by decisions made during missions and map events. There are two spectrums of moral alignment, rightful or tyrant, and Christianity or old faith. The morality spectrum is visualized as a four-pointed compass with various rewards for specific thresholds. This morality spectrum also has an effect on your knight's loyalty, with rightful knights having a penalty if Mordred is a tyrant and vice versa, with similar effects for old faith and Christianity. Loyalty can be increased through map events such as sending knights to handle specific situations or deciding in favor of your knight's particular alignment. The loyalty of each knight in your court is important, as more loyal knights will gain benefits to increase combat potency, while disloyal knights will receive a penalty. 
While the morality system did seem interesting at first, it functions as a push and pull between the two values on the same axis. As a result, once you decide on a particular moral path for a playthrough, there's very little incentive to stray from that path because you're only delaying your morality rewards. Overall, King Arthur Knight's Tale is certainly an enjoyable experience, but there are a few design choices that I can't decide if I do or don't like. One example is that there's no accuracy value that affects whether an attack hits. There is a cover system that reduces ranged attack damage received, but all attacks are guaranteed to hit unless a character has a skill granting dodge chance or a blind debuff. On one hand, this makes it easy for you to position your party and mow through enemies while making the most of your limited team, but on the other, it also means you need to be aware of positioning so that you don't get overwhelmed by enemies. Another observation during my playthrough was an apparent lack of ways to spend gold in building materials. Yes, you're able to build and upgrade your facilities in Camelot, but a majority of the upgrades didn't seem worth the expenditure. This may be a side effect of playing on normal difficulty and having experience with turn-based RPGs, but upgrades such as having additional slots in Hospice to restore the vitality of your knights seemed useless because my knights rarely took vitality damage. There are additional bonuses that can be unlocked by purchasing previous upgrades, but in some cases even those bonuses didn't seem worth the massive sum of gold required to unlock them. A final aspect of the game that I personally struggled with was the limited roster of knights you're able to keep. With a fully upgraded round table, you're only able to have 12 knights on your roster, actually 11 considering Sir Mordred is mandatory. There are four aspirant knight slots where your newly recruited characters will reside if you have no available space on your active roster, but the only way to add a new knight to a full roster is to permanently dismiss a currently active knight. As I did every side mission the game made available, I quickly realized that if I wanted to bring in more powerful knights or more interesting classes, I inevitably would have to dismiss someone from my roster. In character RPGs, I usually become invested in each character and try to keep everyone at the same level and alive. While the decisions on who to cut were relatively easy to make when new knights were higher levels and I had learned the strengths of each class, it was still personally a hard pill to swallow. This didn't take away from my enjoyment of the game, but I definitely was not expecting the situation of being forced to part with characters. King Arthur Knight's Tale is an engaging tactical RPG that was impressive both conceptually and visually. While there are elements of depth to the game that inevitably become less impactful, the core gameplay loop is solid with a diverse cast of characters that still manage to feel unique despite sharing classes and skills. King Arthur Knight's Tale is one of the more accessible tactical RPGs that I've played. While not being as dense, it does still have a playtime that rivals mainstays in the genre, with a clear story progression that kept my interest better than most. Thanks for watching, take care, and remember, keep having fun.